Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna just put it. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Oh. No, so yeah, they won't be able to hear it, so that ah. mic is just for the laptop. Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, hello everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming here today. So, uh, can you actually see what is behind me? Uh, okay, so I'm Phạm Phi Hoàng, just call me Harry. And currently, I'm a front end developer at Agro Merchant. And today, because it is Singapore ZS, so I'm going to talk about the JavaScript asynchronous code. Uh, so, uh, the agenda of this talk is how we're going to deal with asynchronous code in JavaScript. So, uh, how many people in here know about callback in JavaScript? Can you raise your hand? Uh, how many people know about promise button in JavaScript? And how many people know about a sin away? Okay, so that should be fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, why we need the uh, asynchronous call in JavaScript? Because JavaScript is a single thread language. It means it only get a single code stack, and it can only do one thing at one time. So uh, because of that, if you do main too much thing in JavaScript, it's going to block the browser, and it's going to hang the browser. And as a result, we got a very laggy UI. So for example, I will just run a little innocent code in JavaScript. You see, is it a really simple Fibonacci? And for a value like 20, it should be fine. But let's say if I increase it to 42. Mm. Oh, sorry. 42. It's going to hang the browser you see here. Because JavaScript is only one single thread. So uh, in this case, let's say if we do it uh, not asynchronous, when we try to call a request in HTTP, or load the image, it's going to block the thread and the user get a very bad user experience because everything is blocked. That's why we have to make a synchronous code in JavaScript. And to do that, we have to use code back. And that's the easiest way to make a synchronous code in JavaScript. So it's an innocent code back. Uh, so this, I, I guess many people know about code back already. So I just try to repeat it again. <laughs> Uh, in JavaScript, function our first class object, so function is also an object, and then a function can be passed as an argument to another function, and the passed argument can later be executed. So the sample code is this one. It's a really easy Z query. So let's say the document ready, it takes in a callback, it is a function, and when you click on a button, it also takes another callback, and this one is a guest reason. So when we try to make a call request to a network, we're going to make a call back after uh, the data is returned. So it's not going to block the JavaScript threads. And I make a simple one with the query. So when you get click this button, it's going to call uh, JavaScript and get a gift of the cat. And the code is why symbol we call the JavaScript get. And on the call back, when we got the data, we make the call back to uh, the, the image URL. And then in here, we just set the attribute to the URL. And in this way, you see, while I click in this one, the UI is not blocked because with the call back. So the call back solved the problem with a synchronous call. But why we don't use this? Because of the reason. It's called the call back hell. Because uh, when you ca try to do the call back and you want to continue sequentially, you have to wait for the first thing to be done and you get put in another call back. And if you put many call back, you got something called call back hell. And it's really horrible, not from the code point of view, but when you try to debug it, when you try to uh, debug or when you try to lock something and when you try to cut the errors, it looks very it's very tedious. So I got another example. This is a call back hell. So let's say in my case, I don't want to just load one cat, but uh, I want to load one cat, one dog, and one fish, and sequentially. So you see here, if I want to do it sequentially, 
uh, yeah, you can see over here. The code look a little horrible. I have to put a cone back here. And after I find the image of the dog, I have to put another cone back. And after I set it, I have to put another cone back when I get the fist. <coughs> and later, if we want to do something like set interval, we got more cone back. And in this code, I haven't checked the case where the, error, uh, the network errors or we got some uh, exception in the code. But it already looked a little complex and very difficult to, to read. Uh, that's why. So that is the downside of cone back. It makes the code really difficult to maintain and to debug. And uh, the next thing with the cone back is sometimes we don't get the, we don't use the function name, but we just, just use inline function, like this one. And when we got an error, an exception, if we read the, uh, the log, it will be really hard to know uh, what, what is the exception and where it comes from. So uh, that is the reason why um, we move to the next day, I mean the promise. So promise, it is a pattern, and the pattern is so some of the problem of the cone back. And um, so a promise, it, uh, it's an object. So instead of a cone back, we return a promise, and the promise is re represent the result of an asynchronous operation. So um, a promise can get three states, pending, fulfilled, and rejected. So it will be easier if I show it in the code, so you can see. So let's say instead of a cone back, I return a promise, and a promise, it got, when it first created, it got uh, the state uh, pending, and when we call the uh, resolve here, it stay trying to um, resolve it. And when we reject it by, by some errors, it will become uh, rejected. So what is the point of using a promise? So I want to try to make the old code, but with different kind of styling. Mm. So this one. Uh, so instead of cone back, now I return a promise. And the first you see here for the function, I don't need to put in a cone back anymore. So let's just compare the new function with the own function. Uh, so with the own function, I need to put in a cone back in the parameter. But now while writing using promise, I don't need to put in a cone back anymore. And what I return, I return a promise. So in this case, the first gonna return the promise, and uh, after the the promise is resolved, I'm gonna get the result and then put it in the image. So the code assemble like this one. And the uh, the good thing with promise is we can change the code. So you see here, we uh, if uh, if we got some result, uh, if we got some errors during the code, uh, we can catch the error in the console log here and the promise it got the function 10 and cast and uh, the problem the promise so is when we want to make um, sequentially code it is easy really easy because the promise can be changed uh, so let's say I can make a promise here and the result of this promise will be the, when we return this one this will become the result of the next promise so, for example, mm, yeah, another code. You see here, now we don't have the cone back anymore because this function can be changed from the last promise and from the last promise. So, if I run this one, uh, we can see it runs sequentially. But now, even if we add more, we just add uh, the code, it looks cleaner because they are all in the same indent. Uh, so, uh, the other reason wha uh, why using the promise is we got the cast here. So, we can change many functions, but if in one promise uh, we got the, an error, the error will be cached in the cast uh, statement here. So, uh, when we read the error message, we can know which promise return the errors and it makes the, uh, the errors handling easier too. So this one, before we use the code back, we got the code back here. And when we do the promise, we, the code, it looks easier to read and it can 
being easy to cut the error too. But still, uh, somebody might say, uh, what if I want to make many cones at the same time? So promise it provides some function called promise own. And what this function do is it's gonna try to run three function cones at the same time. And when all three function cones is finished, it's gonna be resolved and turned into one promise. So the SM, another example. So in this case, the code is not sequentially, but it is parallel. So you see here, I try to make a uh, tree cone with dog, cat, and fish at the same time. Mm, we can see the next work tab. So you see here, we make tree one at the same time, and when we got the result, the promise gonna be resolved into this. Yep. Uh, we can reload again. <coughs> So uh, yeah, this is the assemble code, and when I click this one, it's gonna make three at the same time, and we got another image. Okay, set the key. Okay, so uh, this some of, uh, this that's my experience. Some of my friends already you promised, but they make some peaceful like this. So instead of changing the promise, uh, we use the code back in the den. That's why we got the promise hell, and it's the same as the code back hell. So if you made it error, please return the promise and change it properly. Don't use this kind of code back at the ten function. And another one is uh, at the first time when promise is released, uh, we don't use the cache, but for the then we can got some function called result. This function will be called when the promise is fulfilled. And the reject here is gonna be called when the promise is rejected. Uh, but if we use one write a code like this, in some case where we got some error in this function, this cannot be cast. We have to use a, add another cone clause here. So it will cast the error in the then function. So because at the first, I know that everybody already know about promise and cone back. So uh, the next uh, set want to write why we use promise. Because next we will talk about a scene away and promise. Uh, a scene away is based on promise. So you need to have a good understanding on promise to you a seen away. So this is the reason why we use promise. It makes the code more clean. So we don't actually need to put in the code back anymore. And the function uh, will be easier to write and to test. And for chaining up promise, we don't have the code back hell anymore. So the next thing is the message of a seen away. So why I call it message? Because if you read the property, it treats function return promise as if they were synchronous. Uh, so the thing is we are making, we are writing the asynchronous code, but the code look like synchronous. So let's come back to the code. I have changed noting, but now you see here, the code look like I will try to find a, uh, an image for the cat, and then set it to the image. And the code look synchronous, it means I'm gonna wait for this, and I'm gonna do this after I got the image. But this code will not block the uh, browser at all. So if we do it like this one, yep. So I'm gonna away. It means this one is still uh, return a promise, but with a scene away, it will make, it will uh, treat this one as that a synchronous function. So Yep, another cat. <laughs> okay, so this one is either cone back hell, and now uh, if we do it with a scene and away, we get the code for sequentially. We just cone away, away, away. We don't need any way cone back or any then any cast promise, and. Uh, error handling in a way, a scene away is really simple. You put it in the try pack, and during the asynchronous code here, if we got any errors, it's gonna throw an exception, and we can show the exception here. So if we want to write the code uh, sequentially, we just away its code, and if we want to make parallel code, we uh, it treat the promise at an object, so we away for the promise on here. So, yeah, so to make it easy, I prepare more 
<laughs> demo. So this one, uh, yeah, the first one, uh, let's compare. The, the, uh, this one is gonna get the image of the cat, gonna get the image of the dog and the fish, and it is sequentially, <coughs> but it doesn't block the UI as own. So if we check the network here, it's gonna check the, yeah, you see it doesn't block the UI because on the, on the cone, a synchronous cone, but with a sin away, it look like synchronous cone. So it makes your uh, our code really easier and cleaner. And what if we want to make parallel cone? Is it the same? We make instead of cone from its own, then we just away the promise. So this one. <coughs> Yeah, we make three cones at the same time. And now we got more cat. <laughs> uh, and the last one is the loop. Uh, this is really interesting because even with uh, promise and cone back, it's really hard to write the code for the loop. So let's say if you have want to write a loop with promise, you have to do then and then uh, assign a new promise with another dance. But uh, in here, I can make a simple code like this. So uh, before, when you use set timeout, you will need to put in a cone back, but I change it to promise. So now, when we call set timeout, it's going to return a promise and will be so after a ta the time we specify. And now, so the code here is going to run for three, five times, and we're going to uh, get an image add the image to the, uh, assign the image to the HTML. So I'm gonna, so you can read the code first. So you see here, on the code here, because I don't use a way, so it's actually a synchronous. Uh, so you see, uh, if I click this one, um, you can see we can read the begin run, dog run, cat run, because these two function, it does not block. So we got this one first. And in here, I use a way, so after they run on the loop, it's gonna alert on the finish. Yeah, so uh, with a scene away, we can miss the asynchronous and synchronous code, and it looks really clean and simple. Uh, but the trade off, yeah, so everything looks uh, synchronous. So, uh, but the thing is, the away keyword is only available in an async function. So, let's say if I don't, if I remove this one, we're gonna get a syntax error because this is a normal function and they don't understand what an away is. So I have to add the async keyword. And the async keyword here, let's say if I return some function, return a value. Uh, this one uh, is gonna return a promise. So I, uh, we can actually see it. Let's say a syntax. Uh, this one is not going to return five, but it's going to return um, a promise. So I'm going to try to see. Okay, a sin function. Okay, here is not a promise, and we have to wait for the promise to be resolved. Yeah, that means if we use a sin away in one play up or code, uh, I mean later or sooner, we have to put a sin away in every place, but it is show up, and we have no more cone back, no more then, no more cast, and it looks synchronous code, so it's really clean and easier to debug. Um, so let's come back to that one. Let's say for the sequentially here, um, we can easily put a debugger, uh, put a debug in here to check if it is the right one. So I can try put a debugger here and run it. Yep. So we see I can already get the uh, yep and the code. It looks really like synchronous code. <coughs> oh, something. Oh, sorry, because I still keep the debugging running. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but 
uh, one of the problem with a sin away isn't support in own browser so if you go to can I use you can see it isn't support in IE in the old version of S and in Opera Mini so what should we do in this situation um, we can use paper transpiler and yeah it can transpire into ES file and it's gonna put in some polyfill for generator so the code will be able to run in IE and S but the trade off is the code might get a little bigger because Babel, Babel gonna add in some plugin. And if you want to know what a scene the way do behind the scene, some, uh, don't, don't think it in message. It's just some kind of, it's gonna transpire into some kind of like state machine. Yeah, it's quite complicated, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but uh, you can try to read the code and listen later. So uh, looking back, so from the first day of JavaScript, we have gone a long way for a synchronous code. Uh, before we use code back, then uh, Angular appear and we begin to move to promise. And now everybody knows what is promise and we can move to a scene away. Uh, but still we cannot uh, remove code back completely because we still use code back for event and subscribe or unsubscribe. Um, so my advice is uh, use a scene away if possible. So if your job you don't have to support own browser like IE6 or IEA. So if you can just develop application for Chrome or Node.js uh, 7 or Apple, feel free to use a scene away. Uh, but you should have a good understanding on promise. And one of the combo I like to use uh, if everybody, uh, anybody here uh, write code in uh, use Node.js. Yep. So some of the function in Node.js uh, they use the callback model. Like it's gonna read, uh, it's gonna con uh, succeed error when uh, it's finished getting the file. So we can use the blue bug to promise this one, and it's gonna become a promise. And then if we co combine with a single way, we got on the code look asynchronous, but actually we got the benefit of asynchronous code. So yeah, that is. So thank you for listening and. Um, so if everybody had so any question, yeah. So <coughs> wait for the whole session, it seems you're only doing yeah. Ajax calls. Yeah. Not right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just share some of my usage. <coughs> so we use this production with the Babel. So. Uh, one tricky part we realize is sometimes developers forget to add a wait before the function call, so it becomes executing as an asynchronous call. But yeah. uh, when you go to debug, you find out, oh, we have asynchronous before the arrow function declaration, why my code is still asynchronous because we forget to put a wait. I mean, that's one maybe tricky part within that, but overall, I mean, it's still good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, and one thing, uh, all of the all of the thing I demo is on the web, but asynchronous is available for Node.js sev uh, version uh, seven and above. So if you use Node.js, you can begin to use asynchronous way. Okay. So any more questions? Uh, if yeah. you don't. While doing from suppose yeah. I want to debug at the time of. One point of time, you want to switch to another thread or another uh, asynchronous. Yeah. Conditions. How to switch? How to give a, uh, the multiple? Uh, so can I? I don't understand your question. So you. Uh, so can you repeat your question? Suppose I do multiple uh, yeah. tasks from. Yeah. Promise. Yeah. Different promise. Uh, when I debug at one point of time, I want to the other part of code which is running <coughs> uh, I mean to be honest yeah you have to run after that one because JavaScript is single thread so let's say even <coughs> if you got many code uh, so some will be before the order so after that one you cannot switch you have to run uh, you have to run that function and bug the debugger for another function oh, yeah. your comment box is your train like doing parallel program so someone maybe it involves like testing in terms of like parallel programming testing. It yeah. can get a bit very tricky at this point in time, especially <coughs> like because you cannot even predict whether the, the actual sequence that will happen take place during like when you're actually running the program. 
Yep. Okay, so uh, I think I guess that should be enough. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, sir.